Okay. All right. <clears throat> Can you see my screen? Yep. That is pretty cool. I appreciate you doing this. Yeah. This is how it works. So, it's it's pretty straightforward. Okay. Mute the sound. All right. Uh, Wukong top. Okay. That's fine. That's a great pick. That's a, it's just as a champion in general. Good. He has a good kit. Teleport in and uh, very good initiations can change the flow of the game, change the change the pre change the pressure just by being Wukong. Just by standing still, you're a threat because of just his kit alone. When they see a Wukong, they already fear. So if a team was smart, they would probably camp you to drop your morale and then like decrease your abilities to change the flow of a team fight. But that's what I would do. Just like camp. Oh, Wukong's strong. Don't let him get to six or slow his progression down to six and drop him drop his morale so that he doesn't do jack shit okay what you're doing right now is very 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 standard it's supposed to be done you're supposed to walk around and um walk around and scout for scout for potential invades and then uh you you do want to push him away but you don't want to commit to it it's good that you took your time to be patient to level up your ability and you took E rather than Q. E is better for pushing the lane at level one, and Q is for like Q is for like 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 champion harassment. But it's not recommended that you take that ability at level one. So it's yeah. I think if we were going to invade, we would I would take a Q just for the armor shred, right? Mm -hmm. And it also depends on your your team's hard CC because you consider you can consider your E as a form of um. <clears throat> gap closing in case that they flash and then you're like okay easy chase after them and you get you catch them but you can still cue them like oh hey this guy's really low armor shred and then if you have a leona since you have a leona you can just you you have leona um start queue she will lock them down you shred them your team does all the damage they need and you kill them yeah. either way both options are still fine it's like it's not like it's not like one option is just as good as the other one it's just that one is more one is more preferred than the other it's not better but it's just more preferred Okay, so this is what you want to do is you want to actually E the wave. You want to auto, then E the wave. Because the moment you E the wave, it increases your attack speed, which, you know, helps you push faster. The faster you push, the faster you can hit level 2. The faster you hit level 2, the faster you level up your Q. And then you control the you control the lane more. So you know that, um, if you don't know this, the first, the first 7 minions you kill as a solo laner grants you level 2 right away. Right. Yeah. So what you yeah, can do is you can you can get that minion right there, that one that's really low, right here. This one, you can get this one very low, and then right when you're about to hit, like like when it's about to die, you want to e his face. If your if your clone RNG like hits the really low health minion, it'll grant you level two. You speed skill up your Q, and then you harass him right away. So I, what I mean is if you if you when you level up. You can press Control Q to skill up your ability without actually like clicking on it. So if you, gotcha. if you stand right yeah, here, yeah. So if you stand right here, you E him. There's a there's a one in like one two three four five six. There's a one in six chance that your one of your three clones will smash this minion right here. That will grant you um, the minion kill since that's the seventh minion. That will grant you an instant level up. You'll hit two. Your your damage goes up. Your you get a new ability. You level up your Q. You hit him with your E. You're already on him. He has no escape because he leveled up his uh his DOT ability. He doesn't level up snare. So then that means you land your Q for free and then you walk back. You have no threat. Like you're not even within tower range. So that means yeah, right here. I got you. So I should have been closer to E to him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're also more of a threat because he only has two health potions, whereas you have three. You have more sustain, and you can last in the lane longer, because a potion is essentially 150 extra HP. Where he right. only where he, where he has three, you have two. You you have three, he has two. So he he doesn't have as much health as you. Yes, good job. Ward right there around three minutes. You want you want to actually ward based on your jungler's route. The problem is Warwick is a jungler that like takes he takes an extra he takes a few extra camps. So you gotta you you have to ignore that. So what you can consider is. Um, by the time he gets to his other half of the jungle, you can begin to ward because you you treat the jungle as if it's mirrored. You know what I mean? Like it wherever their jungler is, pretend which, wherever your jungler is, their jungler is. Makes sense. Yeah, because by the time you they do your jungler does his red, he's looking for a gank. It's the same on the other side. As soon as he finishes his blue buff, he's gonna look to gank your lane. Yeah, so it, it's like you can ward later. Is what I'm trying to say. You can ward a little bit later. You don't have to ward so early because it only lasts one minute. And then by the time the minute comes off, um, 
you lose a minute of vision because that's that's a cooldown. That's the cooldown of the trinket. You you get a minute of vision, you lose a minute of vision, and then you get back another minute of vision. So in that one minute window, you might be in trouble. Also, you want to prioritize cannon minions. Like use your abilities to last hit if you can't get the last hit with an auto. And you also have more min know that you have more minions. If you have more minions, um, you can fight him if he tries to harass you with autos because he, you lose tra he loses trades because whenever a mi whenever you hit a champion, um, your the opponent's minions will jump on you. So if he hits you while you're under a giant fucking creep wave, that's like two v one in him because like a bunch of minions gotcha. has a a bunch of minions. Yeah, that's big on him. that's big on bottom lane. Like nobody in silver elo understands like mm -hmm. min that, that minion, minion waves like when to engage and stuff. Yeah. But minion, but minion waves in bot lane is a little bit different. Now, when you see him start to be like aggressive, like uh, all of a sudden, like right, like based on his movement patterns, you can tell when an opponent is coming for a gank or not. Like if he starts activating abilities that he doesn't activate, it potentially means that you're in trouble. But the thing is, he he doesn't like he doesn't move. Like what what like if you're watching, you're I'm watching his patterns, and you should watch his patterns too. If he suddenly becomes aggressive, it means that there's a jungler coming. Like like he was he was passive as fuck. He was scared as fuck for a moment. Then suddenly he starts moving forward. Something's wrong there. So right now, yeah, there is a potential chance you might get ganked because you don't have the vision. Once you see Maokai mid, you have all rights to be aggressive. The problem is you, you're a little low, so you wouldn't want to fight. You wouldn't want to trade with him um, improperly. Yeah, so I got right you. Yeah, you was... to, yeah, you're gonna. Need, you would need to flash, and if he does flash after you, it's fine. Like, because that means he wastes he wastes his flash trying to in in pursuit of you, which isn't really ideal in in terms of like um, early game. Cause like you, you still have the threat of using the clone, but like the clone, the clone is harder to manipulate with, uh, with with Swain because, uh, when he dots you, if you clone, uh, his dot will magically disappear, and he'll he'll know when you disappear. Is what I'm trying to say. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So it's really yeah. difficult to dot with with uh, with with him against you because uh, it's just like he he knows when you clone. If he's smart, he would see it. That's where bush manipulation comes in, but bush manipulation only applies like like when you're when you're in the middle of the lane, because it's harder to do bush manipulation towards the towards the edge of the lane. Like when you're pushed all the way up there, you only have one bush to fall back to. Whereas when you're in the middle of the lane, you've got two or potentially three bushes to fall back to. Gotcha. But but that only works if the if it's like if it's like a stable lane. Like right now he's not invisible, so you wouldn't really do like this is the edge of the lane. This is like the edge of the lane where like you where if you if you were to like fight him, you you'd use this bush right here to your advantage. That's what I mean by bush manipulation. Because when you enter the bush, you de you you uh you de aggro all the minions. So that's why right. when, when people when you harass a champion, um like I said, the minions jump on the champion. You you jump into a bush, you de aggro all those minions. And then you don't attack in the bush because if you attack in the bush, they'll see you and then they'll re-aggro you. So you'd have to like really like like well, yeah, you'd have like to walk out of the bush and then re-engage. Okay. Yeah. So right here, this is the stabilized zone. This is like the fifty percent mark where the lane is just like standard. But right now you have a minion advantage, so you can engage on him. Um, you can carefully engage on him. You don't want you don't want to go too ham. You want you can you can like auto Q. I guess you can like oh you have ulti okay so you can auto, you have a level six power spike because it's fucking Wukong. He has nothing. You you don't have flash, but he, look how far he has to play back. Like just knowing that there's a giant minion wave. Like this guy is good at just like seeing the minion wave in general. He he's got a you've got a giant minion wave, so he can't attack you. And you've also got level six, so you have a lot of pressure. You can sit over here and zone him. You don't have to push the lane because if you push the lane, it just brings it closer to the tower, which means that you're in you're in a higher chance. You you have a higher chance to be ganked. Provided okay. I was thinking that I wanted to push that as fast as possible so it would reset. Mm -hmm. Well, it does reset, but it depends on where he p keeps the wave. Because sometimes, if a Swain is smart, he would just sit here and just like tank all the minion aggro, and then like let his yeah. wave catch up, and then like freeze it up here, freeze it like in this zone so that the tower doesn't touch it. This guy was pretty good. I pretty um, if I remember, he did that. Like he he's freezing it right off. here so that the the minion wave keeps going towards his favor. Like he's not he's not he's not like pushing it on purpose. He's he's last hitting it so that it stays. Uh, w within his safe zone as as f as long as possible, it gives him an advantage and it gives you a disadvantage because if you try harassing him with anything, he will it will backfire. Yeah, because the tower will just eat me. Mm -hmm. Now right here, yeah, this is a smart, this is a fine engage, but you don't want to, you don't want to like, you want you want to force him to leave his 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 comfort zone. Pop, yeah, good, you're popping potions. I probably could have popped the potions a little bit earlier if I like, because I knew that I was gonna go in on them, so I should have had them ticking. Yeah, the sooner, well, the, yeah, the sooner the better. 
naturally. Like it's it's like it's like instinct that potions should be popped. And then um, this is this is a decent zone. Like this isn't the danger zone. The danger zone is like when you're close to the tower and stuff. But he's got a lot of sustain, no, knowing that he still has his ult. But also keep in mind his, your opponent. Keep always keep in mind your opponent's mana. Now that he's leveled up to level seven, it's harder for you to engage. Not only because well you're low on mana, but also because your stuff's on cooldown and he has a bigger minion wave. His ult has a very short cooldown. Like his ult does have a cooldown, but it's a very short cooldown. So he has yeah, all the advantage. Like he might kill you right here if he if he has flash, which I don't think he flashed earlier, but he. He can he can actually kill you. This is where you would this is where you would back actually. Like you would you would lose the wave. But, well, he has no mana, but you can you can yeah, stay. Yeah, super safe here. You can stay and safely farm under tower. Um, using your E. Oh, you should be maxing E, uh, not Q, because uh, Q because uh, without without the because Wukong needs to attack really fast because it's 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 really nice. The Q the Q is just for like like um, all inning, but like like it it doesn't it doesn't play as much of an effect as E. Like you get more attack speed with you. You get more. You get more uh, bonus. You get more damage per time. Like the armor shred okay. doesn't really matter if you're not attacking. You're, if you're not attacking that fast. It's like it's like what's the point of shredding ten armor when you can only do like two? Uh, shred forty armor when you can only do like two attacks. Whereas you can shred ten armor but do like ten attacks. That's what I mean. Like 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 the analogy is just like the same. Like you do more damage because you're 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 attacking more even if it's the, the armor shred is low. I think I die here because I wanted yeah. to push the wave. No, in no, no. You don't always have to push the wave. If opponent leaves lane, you can you you shove the lane. Yes, this will grant you. This will grant your opponent. This will deny your opponent. But um, if if they leave, if you don't push it fast enough, you want to just you want to just like shove to as far as you can and then back out. What do you think of getting Hex Drinker first instead of just the normal Brutalizer? You don't have to get Brutalizer at all. I mean, like, it's not mandatory that you require Brutalizer. You can get you can get Hex Drinker first because of the lane matchup. It's fine. It's not like it's not like you lose okay. with it. Like, it's just it's just like okay, this matchup it calls for a Hex Drinker because his damage over time is very intense. He can not noticing that you uh, noticing that I lose trades early it means that okay, Hex Drinker might give me an edge. And then uh, you didn't buy potions or a ward, so that's that's just a small thing you need to buy. You always buy one potion or two potions and and uh, one or two wards, so it grants you grants you lane sustainability. So you can yeah, I came back with a lot of uh, lane well, well, what I was thinking was that I had teleport and I wanted to get merc treads, so I wanted to save money and just be safe. But I guess that would have been better. So I'm going to yeah. be here farm merc anyway. Costs, like the magic resist part of merc treads costs 500, so that you wouldn't be able to afford it. And then teleport back in the lane. It's not worth to. It's not worth to teleport back in lane with just the merc treads. You want more than just the merc treads. So right here, this is a, this is a stable part of the lane where you, it's just all about laning phase right now. So he's gonna try to like just harass you. You can counter back at him. You didn't want. You wouldn't want to ult there because he has a lot of minions. So the minions suddenly aggroed on you, and he has the ability to sustain under your minions. So even if you even if his minions aggro you, okay. So here's a gank coming in, but you don't have your ult. You can stealth in, and uh, you can stealth in because then that'll yeah. That'll grant, that'll grant pressure. I think he ends up yeah. killing both of us. Oh, never mind. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to push the lane with Warwick. Because Warwick is top, there's no way he can do dragon. You guys can't do dragon right now, so you can call for a push for Warwick top, or you can push alone by eing the wave and shoving it straight to the tower. Because um, if you, if you one press step, tab... One step, ahead, one step ahead of you. Stop. Yeah, you're pushing the tower, well, just, right? Right, yeah, and I even asked him in chat to stay and get tower. But I know what you're saying. If you press tab, you can see who's on, like visible on the map. Too. No, no, I wanted to check what summoner spells Swain has because if he has teleport, then that means that pushing the tower would be just a better, he, uh, just a good option. I don't think he had. I just tabbed. I don't think he had teleport. I think I did. That was the reason that I asked for the gank. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't have teleport, you have every right to put. You have you you have more pressure on the map, because then if you leave, he has to like yeah. I uh, can't fuck. Okay, hold on. Okay, yeah, he has he has ignite. So that means that he's looking for kill potential in lane. So which means that if if he gets if he gets rolling, that's going to be danger for you. But um. And your team, but exactly. like at the same time, that's yeah, exactly what happens. He ends yeah. up getting like twenty kills. If he leaves the lane, though, you just shove. Yeah, this is enough. Like you don't, you don't want to hit the tower. You don't need to hit the tower. In fact, you're too low, so you just want to back, and then just like leave. You don't even need yeah, to go to that push. Yeah, he's gonna try to chase you down because he's got a lot of speed. This is yeah. Okay, yeah. That's I figured cool. I was ca I figured I was caught anyway, so I was hoping that he would just go to that second bush and hope that I yeah. cloned. Once you just shove to, yeah, once you shove to the tower, you don't need to uh, you don't need to um, continue pushing, because if you if you hit the tower, there's like because like there's a chance that he like like they're only gonna take about thirty seconds. You have like a thirty second window to like to like.
push up to the tower push. and just leave, come back with full strength and um, your next items, and then uh, some wards and potions, and then you're ready to fight again. That's that's the. Do you think sec route. Do you think my second buy should have been um, the Rav Hydra for sustain instead of the Brutalizer? The Hydra is nice. Keep... Brutalizer is nice too. I prefer the Hydra. Yeah. Because but the with your playstyle, you like you need to push like against Swain, you need to push. So Hydra would be better. Like it would be quicker. And you also want to tab to see if the guy's building armor too. So since he's missing, okay. So what you want to do? You have two options. You can teleport to help, or because there's no looking at the map, you can look to see if there's an opportunity for you to teleport down, and assist your team. If there isn't, just shove the lane and keep shoving to tower because he has he has to he has to take the opportunity cost. Either I help my uh, Swain just says I have to help my team and lose my tower, or um and I could pick or pick up kills on the side, but I'll lose my tower. Like it, it's like. He has to he has to trade effectively, so right now there's nobody top, which means you have you have to keep pushing. This is where you would hit the tower because you're at full health and you have no reason to back down. You wouldn't hit the tower now though because there's minions and the your minions aggro their minions, um, so you want to push the you want to push the minions first. You want to track where your minion wave is so um, that your push is mo as most effective as possible. Now yeah, because sometimes is, you want to freeze it like right outside the tower range to let a wave pile up. Yeah, and then you want to shove it into the tower. You want to queue it, good. You want to auto, you yeah, just keep going like that. And this is where E comes to play. Helps you kill the tower faster. Now notice that Maokai is behind you, which means that Swain's coming in from probably one of these two directions. So you, your best option is to escape. So he flashed, just keep that in mind that he flashed. So I, I have the timer in my mind. You E to the minion wave if you can, and then you uh, ult. Well, I would ult there. I would E to the minion wave because that gives you a gap. Because then he, they, they already burned uh, Mal, uh, Swain Flash. You want to write down that Swain has no Flash as well, so your team knows that um, next time they gank Swain or attack for Swain, he doesn't have an escape other than his, like, sustain. But that doesn't count it as, a, as an escape. So that's just a, that's just a tip. Um, you want to make sure that um, you know Flash timers too. It's only 5 minutes. So it would be 19 minutes when he has Flash. So that means you got your, your team has about a 4-minute window. Uh, four to five minute window to to freely kill Swain without without pressure. Yep, like right now, like Syndra, Syndra, if she uh, pushed her lane first, she has to push her lane before she roams. She pushes her lane, then roams. Uh, you guys get a free kill on uh, Swain. There's no hesitation in the kill because there's no way you can dodge it. That was pretty good. She has ulti, but she can't use it because there's no damage. Cause like it doesn't work like that. Oh jeez. Got one v one by Zed and Warwick's counter jungling instead of actually assisting a pressured lane. That's kind of weird. Yeah, this was a rough game. I remember we lost it pretty bad. I don't remember actually. I mean, I think I'm doing fine now. I, you know, when you didn't ping, have to... when you ping, um, missing ping twice, not once. It's easier if you ping twice. It's just it's just like more more aware. Like yeah, I ping. I made sure to ping like like fucking two times that this guy is fucking me. Uh, like it's just like a heads up warning. It's good that you roamed. Uh, somebody had Hydra. Okay, it wasn't you. I thought it was you because if you had Hydra, you should have proc'd it. Yeah, this is where the speed thing comes in. You got, you didn't have enough attack speed to kill the guy fast before Warwick died. Also, because giant minions are aggroing and uh, Warwick can just heal off of the minions rather than healing off of Zed because heal healing off the minions gives you like more more health. health. Yeah, because it goes by their ar like your armor pen or their armor, and you're yeah. gonna gain. Yeah, when you're okay. getting off of Zed, it's not really worth it. Yeah, I kind of learned that with Zillion's bomb. Zillion's bombs, when you bomb a minion, it goes by their armor or by their magic. Mm -hmm. Their magic resist, not yours. Yeah. So yeah, you want to keep pushing the lane though, because Swain is mid. So this is where you can just you can draw more pressure. Um, you have the option to roam at right now though. So keep an eye on the map. Like you can you can totally gank, but thing is you got to look at ults. So Syndra doesn't have ult, which means that if you ganked, there's no kill potential even if you ulted. <clears throat> Warwick does not have ult. Okay, so they killed Swain. They exchanged. See what I mean? Like, like Swain, Swain can pick up that kill because Syndra doesn't have any burst. So you just keep pushing. There, if there's no answer, you, if you want, but if you're pushing this deep, you need to ward two areas. You want to ward the river, and you want to ward the the intersection between everything here and the blue buff, the Gromp, and uh, the wolves. Gotcha. Yeah. Because, and I've got the words to do it. I don't think I do. Yeah, you have two. You have a. Uh, you can put one. You can put the one minute ward at the intersection. 
Now this is where you want to track your minion wave. You notice that there's no minions nearby, so this means that your push is going to be really, really difficult. Because then you don't have anything to E to. But tracking the next minion wave, you E the first, and then you attack. No, you want to E first before you cast anything. Because when you E, you get attack speed, and this is the point of maxing E. But it's fine. You get the tower. It's just that you could have gotten the tower sooner. Because the sooner you get that tower, the, the sooner you can TP down. I think I think I TP down here, and it turns to be a he big disaster. No, he has no response. That's strange. Alt. Yeah, alt. Oh, it's not up. Oh, it's up now. Yeah, yeah I, I thought it, it was just a terrible situation, because I saw Jinx there, and I thought that was going to be a fight. And by the time I got there, it was just a disaster. The sooner you TP, the sooner you can kill the tower, the sooner you can teleport. Because then, like, like assume, because then ideal conditions could not, like, like, maybe they grouped, maybe during that extra time you took to kill the tower, they, they get, they got, an, that little extra time gave them the ability to group. So because of that, then, um, b because of that, yeah, like, like, yeah. Yeah, like three seconds earlier, maybe I TP in yeah. and then Jinx is because still Because TP alive timer is four seconds, including, and the time you take to take the tower, let's say that's five seconds, that's eight seconds. And then the next thing you should do, like now that now that okay, so to play from here's what you do. You want you want to consider that your team is behind and you have to play from behind. First thing you want to do, clear out the tower, clear out the wave from top tower because Wayne is gonna pressure your top tower. Afterwards, you have to you have to notice you you see that blitz crank down there. Okay, so what you want to do is there's there's potentially two people over top. Now there's three people top. So you don't want you want it's really risky for you to clear the tower. So instead, just like stop moving and back up. Yeah. I hope I back up. Yeah. Okay, you good. You do. That's good. <laughs> To play from behind now, this is where this is where uh, you you have to change the flow of a fight. The second person to change the flow of a fight is Warwick, of course, and the last person is Leona. Jinx 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 is only needs to just sit back and auto, but she can't change the flow of the fight with just by autoing alone. She needs to change the flow of a fight when they're all low. People that can get everyone all low is you and Warwick. They'll get someone low, shoot uh, so Jinx can shoot an ult, then get the reset, and then that changes the flow of the fight. Only you guys are a pick comp, definitely a pick comp because you've got Syndra, Leona, and Warwick on your team comp. And then once you pick someone off, Jinx gets resets. And then you can just uh, you can be patient with your ults too. This is another. This is a champion that requires patience with their ults. Because if they if the situation ever arose where you have to uh, for five v five, you can if just by initiating a fight versus. Um, not initiating a fight because if you don't initiate a fight with your ult, it means you're being patient with your ult and you're gonna change the flow of the fight. Versus initiating with the fight means that you guys have enough. You guys think you have enough burst to like win everything. So this is where you're thinking you have enough initiation, but <laughs> there's a problem. You don't have any follow up. There's even no if you yeah, assassinate, there's... yeah. Even if you assassinate her, there's no follow up, and your team is forced to come and back you up. So that's that's uh, that's problematic because there's nothing they could do in response. So yeah, getting vein is fine, but you don't need to. Uh, you don't need to you don't need to ult uh, because you have to consider that um, Jinx isn't with you guys, so you guys lose a you guys are down a man. Like even if you kill Vayne, that's that's too much because then you have no escape. You don't have uh, you don't have flash, so you gotta wait. You gotta be patient about again. You gotta be patient with your ults, because then what happens is when when you ult, everyone's gonna first of all get hit. Most people are gonna get hit by it. Second of all, they're gonna go for you or move move you away from them so that the ult doesn't continuously hit. So that's that's so knowing that that means yeah, so that they're going to be scrambling and not fighting. Yeah, they're going to be scrambling, but they're going to be p focusing their attention on you. And if they're focusing their attention on you, what does that mean? It means that they're not focusing their attention on other champions such as Jinx, Syndra, Leona, and Warwick. Which means that if they're on you, they're not on your team. This is why Wukongs just go like one or two damage items, then go full tank. Because um, when they're focusing their attention on you, it means that your team can change the flow of the team fight. Because what happens is when you're patient, the team team fights go in one direction. So it's like, it's like uh, if you were to describe this in colors, uh, red team, blue team... So you guys got it's like oh shit. So it's like it's like your team comp versus like their team comp, right? And then they have a back line, they have a front line. When they when when a team fight starts, let's say they initiate let's say they initiated a team fight. Let's say they initiated a team fight. So once they initiate a team fight, the team fight direction goes this way. Oops, I'm gonna need to change colors real quick. Alright. So it goes this oh. It goes this way because when they initiate a team fight, somebody's gonna like start off, and then afterwards, your team comp is forced to walk backwards this way. So because then that's naturally how it works. Because that's why team fights are always like not in like narrow directions, and um, okay, this echo is bothering me. Is it from me or from you? It's from it's from you. 
Okay, I had muted my mic. Okay, so um, I can I can still hear it. You can still hear an echo. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was like somebody talking in the background, but it's actually like like it's it's like my voice, but it's like it's like a robotic echo. Uh, I don't know what to change because I just muted my mic because someone walked in, and then let me try. It. Is that better? Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, team fight direction goes this goes in one way, and when when you right here, let's say this is you, when you ult right, when you ult when you ult uh pink. When you ult them, it's gonna force them to draw. Oh shit! It's gonna force the enemy team to draw all their attention on you to protect that one person that you initiated the ult on. Which then means that the team fight goes back this way. You change the flow. That's what I mean by changing the flow of a team fight. That's, I gotcha. That's 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 why the best thing to do with Wukong ults is to be patient with them because if you if you start off a Wukong ult uh, with the team fight, it means you're gonna force the fight to go in one direction. And then suddenly, if something happens like a, um, on their team comp, like a Maokai goes in on someone and locks them down, the team fight's gonna go the other direction because they're they're gonna have to force uh, they're gonna have to forcefully they're gonna have to forcefully get Maokai off of off of uh, off of whoever he snared down. And then that changes the flow of a team fight too, because then um, you initiate it, so it goes one direction. Maokai turns it around by ch forcing it the other direction. Of course, Maokai oh, might not sense. die. And then it's hard. It's harder to position that way if, if when the flow of the fight changes. Yeah, and it also like dis it, it also disables like it it, it, it like because like when you bur when you when you're patient with your ult, you can wait for things to th be thrown off. Oh hey look, Vayne just tumbled. She can't escape this. Oh hey look, they just burned an exhaust. Oh hey look, the, 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 Swain's snare is down. Let's go in, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like hard CC stuff. You like like you can you could be patient about your ult because of that. And then whereas Maokai can see, hey look, Warwick doesn't have an ult, and Syndra just popped her stun, and Leona is Leona has died. What can I do? I can just um simply go in with uh, Maokai because then there's nothing to push him off. That's a free kill. Like that's that's a that's that's I don't like I don't know what he was doing there. That's like free, but you don't have make sure you don't burn summoners for, um, for that. Which you didn't. That that's fine. Good secure vision. Always kill those crabs whenever you have an opportunity to because vision is very very key. Uh, for masteries you're running either you can run a lot of a mixture of masteries twenty one nine zero versus nine twenty one zero versus sixteen fourteen zero versus fourteen sixteen zero and fifteen fifteen zero. It depends on. Depends on your team comp though. If you guys need a frontline, which in fact you do, nine twenty one zero or fourteen sixteen zero is also is very ideal in this situation. Um, fourteen sixteen zero grants you offense as well as defense. Versus sixteen fourteen zero grants you more offense than defense. Um, nine twenty one is just like just like you'd have to build a lot more tank items to make make use of the twenty one in defense. Notice that your team's under in trouble. You want to walk there as soon as possible. Jinx is recalling, so you want to stop walking there. In all honesty, you can't you can't contest because they're they're doing dragon. Like I don't think this would be a very a very suitable option. You guys just might have to drop it because you well your AD carry is too far to follow up. And even if he, even if she was there, it would be very difficult because she hasn't purchased her items. Okay, Swain. Got, okay, Syndra got a kill. It's Jinx ult coming down. That doesn't do anything, which means that you guys lost the Jinx ult. Leona's in there alone. She's gonna die. So yeah, you guys are gonna have to drop that dragon, and if Jinx chooses to continuously follow, then she's gonna kill herself too. She didn't need to go in, but also at the same time, she she needed to secure she needed to at least secure vision so you guys get a ti a rough timer on it, so then you could prepare for the next dragon. And if they take too many dragons, you have to fight them at the last dragons because if they get if they have four and they get five, then it's it's pretty bad. Yeah, the fifth one is big. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Uh, pfft, what the fuck? Clear this wave and then leave, uh, because you you're in trouble immediately after you clear the wave. I might not even clear the wave. I hope. Use your hope W to <laughs> randomly, but use your W to like like push the wave. You want to E backwards. Oh, they're gonna cut you off. That's fine. You can you can draw their attention. No, you, what what you want to do is you want to eat to the minions. You want to make you want to stall. Like even if, if you're gonna die, just stall. Stall for time. So that your teammate can at least get some more vision, cause like Syndra was just getting a ward down, and like um, they're gonna regroup back up at top. I don't know why they're doing red right now. You got Syndra should not be at red. She should be able to pick them off. It's only two people. You guys have three people. You guys have two ults, three two ults potentially three ults. This is free kills. 
uh, you shouldn't be standing still though. Like you can't just like you need to see what's happening. Okay, an enemy's been slain. Always see what's happening in the map because if you keep your camera locked, like you don't you don't have an idea of what whether or not an opponent has summoners. You don't know if Zed burned any any crucial items. Any if he dropped a ward, you don't know if you can't see anything. So basically, you always always keep an eye. If you're dead, just keep an eye on other people. Watch how people move. Watch how people do things. Maybe that maybe that comes in later. Like maybe maybe he always throws his shadow like diagonally downwards. So that means you can prepare for it by flashing on top of it or something like that. Movement like it's 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 those, it's those little things. Okay, that was a pretty awkward ult. That's not a kill. In fact, you guys are pro no. She's dead. Oh, the face of the mountain though. Oh my god. No, back down. Oh my god. Blitz has TP. What the fuck? Okay. Help help him out. Oh, that's a free kill on Swain. This was embarrassing. That's fine. Just take that. He gets he doesn't get knocked up. E to the minions. Oh, never mind. That minion just died, like right when you were about to E to it. When you E to a minion, E E is considered a gap closer, not just like a damage a damage tool. Like just just remember that because um you had many opportunities to use your E to escape, but instead you use your E for damage instead. Um, so just remember that it's an escape tool. And it, it looks retarded because like you go in like three different fucking directions and shit. But like if they're if they were if they were blind or something, they wouldn't see which direction you're going. Like, oh crap, three Wukongs, what do I do? You know, like like when maybe they tar maybe they, like they throw their skill shot ahead, predict thinking that you would E and they throw it on the wrong one because there's like three fucking Wukongs. No, you don't want to engage that. There's no deep vision. Make sure you switch your trinket out and buy some more wards, cause you haven't been purchased. You with your empty item slot, that should be filled with wards or um, even a potion. But potion is not as viable as a ward right now, cause wards are more critical. Switching out to a sweeper grants it so that you can keep your jungle or your areas safe from vis safe from enemy control. Cause right now they're in your, they're all in your jungle. But how are they able to control your jungle so well? There's probably wards, like a few wards deep down in there. So you wanna you wanna drop some wards just to maintain maintain uh, stability in your jungle because when it's unstable, shit chaos starts happening. You should probably stealth there. You don't know if it's warded or not. Uh, you should just like, well, you're probably gonna get that one kill and then probably not make it out. It's a chance. It's like highly likely you're not gonna make it out. Yeah. It's also it's muscle most of the time you guys are getting picked off quite often like they're they're just picking you guys off because blitzcrank is just there but like um what you can do to counteract this is like be really like your team isn't patient enough like they're just trying to defend as fast as possible but the thing is they're not because your opponents grouped sooner than you uh, than your team has grouped and when the team groups sooner it means that they're looking to siege and push push put pressure on the map more you haven't you notice that you haven't used your teleport as often it's it's not only because like like there's no opportunities to teleport but like um, you can teleport into lane to establish more dominance. Um, that's one thing. And the other thing is that um, when you you can force things with teleport too. Like you can force like you can just teleport down and even you can tower dive with your teleport is what I'm trying to say. Like like for if you think your team can um, follow up on a on a tower dive, do it. Like just apply that much pressure to the map. But don't do it recklessly. Like don't don't just like okay, they have flashes and stuff and you burned your flash just to catch up to their face. No, 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 no. You wanna make it so that like, okay, there is a there is an extremely high chance that we, all three of us, can take this, and the the lowest amount of casualties we can suffer is one, and then that and that who's the casualty? Me. So then that's fine. So as Wukong, like if you can kill yourself for two kills and a tower, that's 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 worth the yeah, five sure. minutes down for teleport. But if yeah, you kill first. yourself and you only get two kills off of it, and they don't damage the tower severely, or they just um, choose to back, that's that's half worth it. Like you guys got two kills for two kills for one death, but nothing off the tower. That's not worth it. If you guys go oh three, then like that was that was an that was just like a miscalculated mistake. So, yeah. As for dragons, uh, you can also force to help your team do teleport to help your team do dragons. Like, um, if if your jung if the jungler shows up top and decides to push, there's two options. If if the jungler shows up top right and and they get a gank off and and your team is somehow like like in a position to do dragon teleport down while you're fucking low and then just do the dragon and then back to base and then walk back to lane because then there's no way they can respond to that like what are they gonna do there's there's nothing they could do in response to that if you if you do dragon and then just like back out okay so when they this is where this is where vision dominance come in you don't buy as many wards as like every back should be one one ward minimum one 
it provided you have an empty item slot, but minimum one ward every time. Gotta get into the habit of that. There was this time where I'm playing Jarvan and like I bought so many fucking like I I went back so many times and bought so many wards that I actually had I hit, hit my limit of three wards. So I'm like, oh shit, fuck. So I just kept I just hung on to them like fuck. Bought so many damn wards that there's there there's no that I can't place anymore without losing the previous ward. It's pretty funny, but uh, it just means that like uh, I was backing quite o I was backing too often. That's the first thing. If you're buying too many wards, th there's usually a, a saying that like back then. There's never enough. There's never too many wards, but the problem is that if you're backing too much and buying one ward every single time you back, it means that you're backing too often, and you're in a situation where you're forced to back too often. Uh, you are stopping them from doing dragon. Yes, you didn't steal it. You could focus. You can emphasize trying to steal it, but um, always, always wait for your team, because yeah, that's what I was going for. I didn't think I had enough time to wait, and I still didn't get it. Mm -hmm. Well, take a look at the damage. Like, if they have smite, then like consider that they have smite, so it's going to be really hard to steal. Maokai has smite, so it's harder to steal. And then at the same time, if he misses smite, you still have only like a split second opportunity to, to hit it. <clears throat> so right now, um, if if you were to try to come back from this, it's uh, it's very it's very hard. But like you can still, like, uh, Banshee's veil is a big problem as an item. You also rush a lot of damage items. Like you have three damage items when Wukong only needs just two. You only need two damage items for if if anything. Because then the rest goes tank. Because you you need to be the front line, and even if you deal all that damage, like your team most of the time can't follow up on follow up on your damage because they're not in a position to follow up. You make sure you if you ult, you want to make sure that your team is at least in a position to follow up. Because if they're not in a position to follow up, if you ult, then like like you just like ult and all of them get knocked up. That's great, but there's no there's no return, there's no like extra extra pressure. Okay, so let's go back to the laning phase. I want to watch your movements in the laning phase. When your jungler pings you to be careful, you want to listen to your jungler because half most of the time they're going to be right because then if cuz consider that like um the only time they're not the only time they're like okay, Maokai's not top then you could be aggressive again. But right here, you want to walk into a position where like you would walk here. Like I I would stand here even if I'm taking a bunch of harass, I would stand here. The reason you stand here is because you can push him away a little bit further. He'd have to say, "Oh, well, if he's he's crazy, he must be crazy going up this close. Let me back up to the tower. Maybe he'll eat me." But then, but the fact that he's back here and these minions are dying means that he doesn't get to last hit them for gold. He'd have to use an ability. He'd have to burn mana for them, or risk, or risk, uh, you know, walking up to you. Because like when they're not, if they're not within tower range, then like you can you can hit him. Um, knowing that your minions are ahead, you always want to push the lane. But um, like right here, I would push the lane because early on Swain can't really last hit that well, because especially like because he's a mage, but also because like uh, if he tries to last hit with his abilities, he's gonna run out of mana too fast. He has a lot of mana problems, so I would use your, I would use, I would pop potions and constantly just push the wave until, um, until about three minutes. That's where I would use, like until you see the jungler. That's when you would back up. There's only two places that your jungler can gank, or your opponent, jung your the enemy jungler can gank. It's through try or through river. Most likely of the time, if you're pushed very far up, they're going to only gank the river because that's the fastest route to you. If you're in the middle zone, like the, the stable area, he's just going to push towards, uh, he's not going to push there. He's going to push somewhere else. Or he's going to gank through, uh... Either through lane or through try. Yeah. And then, um, as for movements, you shouldn't be standing still most of the time. Like in in terms of laning, like if you stand still, it means something's up. Cause uh, uh, I mean, he probably thinks you're cloning, but most of the time, you want to pressure. Like you can intimidate people just by just by moving. Like just don't. Like standing still is like a sign of weakness, is what I'm trying to say. Like a lot of people in LCS, they only stand still. Because they're like in competitive, you only stand still because they don't they they don't need to like to like show threat. But like in in like in like solo queue, you need to show you need to show dominance. Cause like. Um, in in competitive competitive is naturally different than um, solo, but um, when you show do you can show dominance through like how can you show dominance through moving? Because when you when you move forward, they'll move backward. If you move forward, they'll go forward, etc. etc. They move based on you, etc. etc. See, you're going forward, they're going forward. He ignited your he ignited your your clone. I just noticed that. So right here, okay, let's let's watch if he flashes or not. You flash, he doesn't flash. So you know that you know that he has flashed it up. 
So you gotta, you always gotta be aware of that. Like, always be afraid of what they have. It's kind of like Hearthstone. Like, okay, he has a Hellfire. He has a, he has something that is a threat to me. Um, he has, what does he have that is a threat to you? He has a Flash. If he hits six before you, he has a Flash. Um, he has a Flash all in with sustain, and you can't counterplay that, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Always be afraid of the worst possible outcome that an opponent can throw on you. Now that he's used Ignite, he can't just flash Ignite you to, to secure that you die. Like, that's, that was a threat that I was talking about to, when I was coaching someone yesterday. What's the worst thing that you can do? Like, he stayed too long, and uh, the threat was the flash Ignite. So, this, so there was a part when you push the lane. Success. This is where you're, you should be pushing the lane. You should be constantly auto-attacking, last hitting, and um, securing last hits. I mean, not last hitting, like securing the last hit and pushing the lane uh, to infinity. Like, just you have a massive minion wave. He, can, he can't he can ult it because he's level 5. You're level 6. You hit level 6, you can jump on him. He has, he has flash, so you can force him to flash just by rushing him down. He used his dot to slow you down already, so there's no, there's no, there's there's a guarantee that he cannot slow you down while you're ulting. Because if he slows you down while you're ulting, like... Like, you're too slow to catch up to him, is, the, is what I mean. So right here, now he's 6, he could just press R, heal up, heal himself back to full health, and he has more pressure on you. You don't need to clone like that, because then that now that means that he has no threat of clone. So he has flash, but he's not going to use it. He doesn't need to use it. There's a part where you push the lane. Yeah, You don't want to trade with him when you're when he's under minions, because he has all these minions, so that's that's what I mean when he doesn't want to trade with you. Uh, he cannot flash kill you, because he has no mana, so you, you don't have to be afraid of that. But if he actually like last hits enough, or levels up right again, then you would, you would be dead. Since he already hit 7, he's not going to hit 8 anytime soon, etc, etc. Since he's out of mana, though, he has to back, because he's afraid that there will be a gank coming, because he, do he doesn't know where the jungler is. So that's why he backed. So right here, you would also back. And you would actually commit to backing, because if you don't commit to backing, he, you're gonna like, you're gonna waste too much time. Like, yeah, there's a cannon minion here, sure, but by the time you get back, it's probably gonna be near your tower, and because you kind of kind of stayed, you well, you, you you well, you lost like like seven seconds, seven eight seconds worth of travel time. Well, I was also looking at my teleport time. I mean, like you can you don't have to. You can, this is where you can save the teleport. Like by the time you walk back to lane, your teleport will be up, ready to teleport down to bot lane. Don't don't forget about that, because then this is where well your bot lane decided to back right now, so you can't jump in. If your mid laner actually decided to fucking ward, because I don't see any goddamn wards on this side. <laughs> if she warded, you can just jump in, teleport, gang Zed. He'll shadow away naturally, or he'll ult. But if he shadows away, flashes, you burn his flash, you burn a sh and you burn his shadow. Shadow isn't as important as flash, but it guarantees that he can't just flash kill Syndra. Eventually, he does kill Syndra for some reason, and he probably does. Like naturally it takes a flash to do it because you gotta avoid some cues and shit. Where's the part where you push the lane? Okay, this is where you guys get the kill. Yeah, so you push the lane here. This is enough. That remember what I said? This was enough. Like just just let it go. Yeah, like, it's fine. Like you don't have to like deny him that hard. Like the, just these minions will kill his minions, or these minions will kill your minions, and he loses sixty gold on that. And sixty gold is enough for a ward, which he will use, which he always buys. He's bought a lot of wards. Like when he's ahead, he buys a lot more wards to guarantee that he's uh he's safe. If you know what I mean. Like he guarantees that he was safe. Yes, I was hoping that he would think that I cloned into that second bush and would go to that one and yeah. I'd maybe get a shot. Thing is he has a lot of wards. Well, he didn't buy wards now, but he bought a lot he has a lot of wards, so he, he knows he knows when you're uh, in trouble. But, um, yeah, when you push, yeah, you don't need to stay, like, like, pushing is enough. Just know that, like, like, every minion that dies is gold. Like, that's 20, 30, like, each of them are, like, about 20, and these are about 15, so that's 45 plus 60, so that's 100 gold. That's a ward and a pot. That's sustain. He has a lot of potions, so that's, that means he's investing a lot in sustain. He's not building, uh, Rod of Ages, so he's not investing in the level up sustain, um, in lane. Instead, he's investing in more power early, and he uses that power to kill you because, uh, you didn't choose the back. You do have teleport, sure, but you have to waste the teleport. Instead, you could potentially go down to bot lane right now. When, if you back, then you could have gone to bot lane to pressure them down here. There's a ward there for you to teleport to. You walk around, you E in, you get a kill. Yeah, sure, Vayne got er, Yeah, sure, Syndra got it, but if you backed and you came in, you could have changed the flow of the team fight without suffering a, um, a casualty. I think Leona was the one who died. I'm not sure, but uh, if I back up real quick. Okay, so everybody's oh, did Leona back? Yeah, Leona yeah, has to back she because she's there. low. Yeah, so you can come here. You can come here. You can secure that. Also, note that they just took the dragon. So, he, like, um, 
there's a chance like they all just went to take the dragon so then your team follows up you could come you can help them swain's not really gonna do much to your tower at the moment like it's just swain it's no big deal but uh yeah you want to use your so the lessons basically covered today are just like um denying someone is every time you every, if they're not lasting in the minion they get denied the minion they don't get the exp they don't get the gold and they lose the, they lose that one minion the other thing is um you against Swain or against someone who doesn't have teleport specifically. He doesn't have a gap closer, so he, it'll take some time to, for him to get to lane. You push the tower and you back. You don't need to hit the tower until they're dead. And if they're even if they're dead, if you don't see their jungler because their jungler might come up and secure the secure the lane's uh, safety, then you can just just back. You want to back. You want to buy. You want to get stronger because the, the the stronger you are against the Swain, the the more pressure you have in the game in general. Because if you're if you can say if you can show to the fact that you are stronger than than Swain, you can you can also show that like, hey, I'm strong to beat Swain, who has sustain above all champions. I can whoop your ass just as uh, just as well. Like that's that's what I mean. Because because if you can solo kill, like if you eventually you'll have enough strength. If you if you kill him a few times, even with some ganks and stuff, um, you can solo kill. If you can solo kill Swain, um, with enough uh enough items, you can you you have a lot more presence in the uh, in the game. And then uh, always yeah, max E. Because when you max E, you get more attack speed. It helps you siege towers. Uh, it also helps you push the uh, push waves faster, because you're attacking more. You're attacking to ensure that the minions die faster, and then um, it also means that you can hit the tower more. So this is where the this is where the use your E to escape, because you can use your E to escape. You can actually okay. So right here, you can E to this, because he's gonna flash over like like we mentioned earlier. He's gonna, like it's not gonna do much, but you can E to this. He walked down. You notice he walked down. So like he, cause he, cause when you clone, he assumed that you're gonna just, you're just gonna keep going down. But you went up. So if you're going up right here, would be your best opportunity. Cause he already used the snare on you. He, you just noticed that he's gonna like uh, right about. No, he already used the snare. So you you eat here and then you just walk away. You can attempt to walk away from up here. Cause you got minions trying to block block you. But you wouldn't want to walk straight through the minions. You wanna you wanna click your way around this tower. Cause then naturally they're just gonna like click. They're just gonna click on you. They're not even gonna fucking look at these minions. They're just gonna like walk. <laughs> That makes a lot of sense, actually. You want to click through. You want to click more though, because like, um, because then if you click, because naturally people will just spam click over here, which means they'll walk through the minions. If you walk, if you click your way around through the tower, it's called direct input. You you input your own commands. You control your own character. More clicks means more control of your character. Is what it's very, very straightforward definition. But you click your way around this way, and it's it guarantees that you don't get blocked by your fucking minions, and you don't get blocked by this fucking rock. <laughs> they will naturally walk through the minion waves because they're gonna naturally click on you. Like, like if they were smart, they would actually like manually click their way around this way, which would take them a longer time to get to you, or an even amount of time to get to you. Because if you're if you're going one if you're going your way around through this rock area right here, if you're going your way if you're walking your way through here, then they're gonna have to walk around there, and that that t travel time is equal. By that time, your clone will be up. You clone, you can walk. You 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 can clone. They're gonna stop for a brief moment to throw shit on your clone. Then they're gonna realize it's a clone, and then they're gonna go forward again so you have an increased chance to escape if you just eat to your minions click your way around here and walk out of course you you still have a chance to die because if they're smart because he has mana and he, and both of them have mana but you buy more time for your team right yeah because right now warwick performs a gank and Malka is nowhere to be seen he's either backing or he's walking down to bottom lane because uh he killed you fast so he's like okay i'm done i'm kind of low i'm gonna drop down uh drop down attack bot lane and uh, probably secure a tower if anything Huh. But yeah, uh, other thing is patience on ults. Uh, don't go in like don't don't go in like crazy because like uh, if your team can't follow up, there's nothing you can do about it, you know. And then uh, let's see, pushing under tower, deny your opponents. Uh, I think that's all I can cover. I'm not sure if there's any more that I remember. I don't remember. There's any biggest thing the biggest thing that was maxing e yeah maxing e maxing e just increases your um it, it just increases your pushing potential that's the first thing it increases your pushing potential and um uh tower tower killing potential because when you just you e you auto you q you auto again and then it, it's kind of like a reset if you q auto q, or auto q auto it's a it's a reset and um that's it's it's really nice to have a reset in in uh in a wukong's kit and then um at the same time 
right there, this is where also E comes into place because E does more damage um, over time than Q. Like like DPS wise, like Q doesn't do as much if, if you max Q. And uh, I think you panicked when, or something when you max when you put a point an extra point in uh, W because yeah. clone clone isn't necessary that, for combat. That, yeah, that should uh, that shouldn't be there. Yeah, that was yeah. a mistake. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you get the you get the point you get the idea like of what I'm trying to like trying to uh, trying to tell you right like it's just uh, E is yeah more more attack speed means yeah. more autos and yeah. it's like, like you can you push said, the lane down. faster you can kill the tower faster and then you can also because you can harass more because if you hit them twice before they can hit you even once it's hella beneficial you come out on top of trades and stuff also because jungle wukong does it too but um, it's like the same thing. Same same pattern. Yeah, faster clear is, is better anyway. Like yeah. it's better to have two autos than having like seven more damage on each attack. Yeah. And then um okay. pushing tower teleports, uh I don't think I can cover anything else so far. Movement is your movements are okay, it's just that you're standing still quite often. It's not that you can't stand still, it's like I'm not gonna forbid you from standing still. It's just that like when you're standing still it means you're not doing much. Like you're not like like if you're standing still you're you're not looking around at the map. You're just like you're just there. Like maybe you're decoyed, sure, but like you're not you're not like pressuring him in lane. Cause then he could that means he can just like walk around, he can walk forward, he can walk backward. It's kind of like it's it's kind of like a race. Like if you stand still in a race, he's gonna move forward while you you do nothing. So if you if you move forward, he's gonna move backward or forward. If you move in response to your movements, like it depends on the lane lane state, of course. Like if you're a, if you're strong in lane and you move forward, he's gonna move backward. If you're weak in lane, you move backward, he's gonna move forward. If you move forward, he's gonna move forward too. In response, if it, depending on the state of the lane, since you were ahead, you he, if you move forward, he would slightly move backward. But every little movement counts because if you can uh, if you can move him backwards far enough to so that he can't last hit, then you come out on top because he just lost money. And, right. And right. everybody knows how much how much everyone hates losing fucking money. So <laughs> yeah, you get the idea. And then this uh, the TP. Well, TP in this case, like um, it was like I said, it was too late because you you didn't uh, hit the, kill the tower fast enough. It's good that you got the tower, sure. But um, it's too slow. Uh, it's too slow because the teleport timer is hella bad. Like the it's just four seconds. Like goddamn, it takes so long. But um, there's a ward down here. Like there, there was a ward down here. You could teleport from the from down there. So there, you have multiple. That options might have been a better spot. Yeah, you have multiple options to teleport to. Okay. I cool. think that's all I can cover for now. All right. Thanks a bunch. All right. Uh, Thanks. So much. You can feel free to send more, um, if anything. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Yeah, I'll find something. I'll do a bottom lane one. All right. If you need more, um, it's gonna be on my channel. Like, I think I can render this damn clip. Like, I can, I can, uh, um, upload this clip. It'll, it'll take a while to upload because it's an hour or something long. Like, yeah, it's a, it's almost an hour. It long. took. It, it took me like three or four minutes. Oh, well, you probably have really good upload speed, but my 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 upload speed is garbage. So, um, this is a fifty-two minute video too. And um, if you need to rewatch this for anything, you can you can come uh, you can come see my channel, and it'll it'll probably be up in a few days. Oh, that's cool. This actual this Skype chat will be yeah, on your every, channel. Yeah, the entire the entire video from beginning to end, and a little bit more because uh yeah. Oh sweet. Yeah. Okay. So if you need to re-see it, like just to, just to check on your check on like okay what what did he say if I forgot if you forgot or something because like it's 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 a lot to take in. There's a lot of things you can do to take in. And then uh, oh yeah, uh, wards and potions like this. This should be your inventory. Like mo these two should be like constant in your inventory. Like always. That's that's another thing. Yeah. It's wards right. over potions, but if you can have if you can have both, that's great. But always have wards and potions. And yeah. Okay. That's like the last tip, advice I can say because that's that's like critical. Okay, so uh, feel free. You can feel free to send more um, through Skype and uh, message me if you uh, need more. And uh, this will be on. This will be up like whenever whenever it finishes uploading. It'll take like a full day to upload at my house because it's slow. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks a bunch. Yeah. No problem. See you. Take care.